Hey guys, welcome back to my channel for another pregnancy update. I am currently 23 weeks and two days pregnant, so we are finally viable. I am so, so happy to be able to say that. I currently feel right now how people feel when they first find out they're pregnant. So it's taken me 23 odd weeks to finally feel this way, but I feel so excited. I don't feel as scared or nervous or anxious. I'm finally just allowing all of those fun pregnancy emotions and feelings to come through and it feels really, really good. So I'm gonna stop rambling. I'm gonna jump straight on into the update because there is a lot to fill you in on. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoy. To start off today's video, I did want to share with you something very, very special to my heart. And if you've been following us for a while, you would know that our last baby passed away at 21 weeks um, gestation. So we're currently at 23 weeks and two days. Um, and I do have something very, very special to share with you guys, just so you can get a bit of a visual to see how big baby is in my tummy. Because I feel like the apps on the phones and things like that, they just... They don't really do justice. So here I have Jackson's hand and feet cast. I did want to bring them out and show them to you. Um, Walk With Wings is a charity that came in when he was born and graciously took these casts and presented them to us in a beautiful frame um, and gave us an extra set that we could hold, which I, I love so, so much. I can't even express to you guys how much this means to me. Um, I do pick these up often and just hold them so I can hold his hand and be close to him or feel like I can be close to him. But just to give you an idea, this is the size of Jackson's hands at 21 weeks. Um, and this is the size of his feet. So as you can see, very, very tiny, but these little feet um, of this current baby have been jumping up and down on my cervix like no tomorrow and um, it's, it's very bittersweet and very emotional to feel them but also to know how big those little feet are so I did want to share that with you today so you can get a bit of a visual of how big baby is because yeah like I said the apps don't really do it justice um, I also wanted to take this opportunity to mention the beautiful charities again that helped us out when Jackson was born so there was Heartfelt who took all the photographs there was Walk With Wings, who came in and did the casts of Jackson's hands and feet. And then there was Bears With Hope, which gave um, a lot of support as well. So I'll have the charities linked down below. If you're in a position where you can donate to them, that would make me so happy and proud. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to start off today with something a little bit different and a little bit emotional um, to share with you guys how big baby is currently in my belly right now. spoken to you oh my gosh I'm still teary since I've spoken to you guys last I have had three different scans four different scans if you include Mondays um, I've had three anatomy scans one at 16 weeks one at 18 weeks and one at 20 weeks and all three appointments they checked out baby's heart uh, baby has four chambers I'm so proud and happy to say this I cried like a baby in those appointments Baby has four chambers in its heart and the blood is flowing evenly through all of those chambers and we have been discharged from maternal fetal medicine. So that is just the best news I can possibly give you and the best update that I can give you right now. Um, I, yeah, I'm just, I'm so happy. I'm so over the moon. That was obviously our biggest concern coming into this pregnancy was, was baby's heart going to be okay this time? And I'm so proud and happy to say that it is. It's perfect. All of baby's organs and limbs and fingers and toes are accounted for and everything is looking great in the scans. I, I feel like, like I said in the intro, I feel like I can finally breathe. I feel as elated and excited and positive for the future as what you do when you first find out you're pregnant if you haven't been through a loss before and, and are unfamiliar with those feelings. So I'm yeah very, very happy to report that. Also, my cervix length is very long. So I think I mentioned when I was pregnant with Sam at 21 weeks, my cervix length was 25 millimeters. Currently, my cervix length is about 40 millimeters, give or take a few. So um, very, very long, thick, healthy <laughs> cervix. Hopefully we don't go into preterm labor this time. Um, but yeah, I'm very, very proud and happy to report those things. 
One thing about my doctor's appointments that kind of bothers me and has me confused is the difference of opinions though between my um, specialist and also the maternal fetal medicine doctors. So they all work together in the same departments and they kind of switch out and whatnot. But the maternal fetal medicine doctors wanted me to have a growth scan at 24 weeks. However, I've been discharged from, the, from them now and my specialist doesn't want me to have my next scan until 28 weeks. So unfortunately, I'm not going to have a scan for another five weeks, which kind of makes me happy because at my last appointment, you guys would have seen in our last upload that the doctor kind of, like my specialist, kind of spilled the beans on our gender. Um, basically, I was there... Um, for my checkup with her they checked my blood pressure they checked baby's heartbeat and then they did a bit of a scan and before they brought out the machine they asked if we knew the gender and I said no it's a surprise Matt doesn't really want to know and they asked if I had any inkling of what it might be and I said what Sam thought it might be and then she basically yeah she just told me I'm not gonna tell you guys though and I hope you guys understand um, to respect Matt's wishes. He really doesn't want to know. I'm so upset about this. I can't believe I'm crying about it because it really doesn't matter in the scheme of things as long as the baby's healthy. But um, Matt doesn't want to know and neither does Sam. So <laughs> I'm going to try my best not to ruin the surprise for them too. We're not 100% certain that what she said was right. Um, the cord was between the legs. So she could be wrong, but... Oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm still so angry about this. I'm so disappointed. It makes me not want to have any more scans until the baby is born and just not see any more doctors and just go into labor. But that is the update on the gender. I know a lot of you guys keep asking if we're finding out the gender and the answer to that was going to be no. Um, we had planned on having a surprise gender just like we did with the boys and yeah, it's kind of ruined now and that has me so mad and so disappointed. But yeah, we don't know 100% for sure anyway, so hopefully it's still going to be a surprise on the day for us and I can just forget what she said in the appointment. Another thing that has me a little bit confused between the two doctors is the recommendations for the medications that I've been on. So you guys know that for the first half of the pregnancy, I was on Clexane shots, um, which is a blood thinner, aspirin, which is also a blood thinner, uh, progesterone, and... What's the other thing? Multivitamins, pregnancy multivitamins. Um, when I went to my appointment at 20 weeks with maternal fetal medicine, they took me off of Clexane and progesterone and said that I didn't need those drugs anymore. However, when I went to the specialist the other day, she informed me that the right artery, I believe, in like going into the placenta, for, like, oh my gosh, I can't even think right now. The, the, <laughs> right artery in the umbilical cord, I believe, that's what she meant, um, was a little bit enlarged and she's a bit concerned about that and obviously for the safety of the baby she thinks that the best thing that we could possibly do right now would be to go back on Clexane just to be sure, like it's just, it, I might not need it, it could just be that the placenta was sitting slightly on the right side but she did want me to go back on it just to be sure. The other thing that she wants me to do that contradicts um, the maternal fetal medicine doctors is she wants me to go back on progesterone and that is because Sam was a prem baby so um, she wants me to go back on progesterone and Clexane so I'll be going back on those very very shortly I just need to take the script back into the hospital and get those um, medications another thing that they did mention in the appointment was that if I haven't given birth they're going to be inducing me at 39 weeks like they're not going to let me get past 39 weeks of pregnancy so that means a baby will officially be born no later than I believe the 24th of August, which is literally five days before Sam's birthday. So there's some fun facts for you. The last thing that I wanted to tell you about my appointment was that I did end up getting my flu shot and uh, whooping cough vaccination. So that is all done. I feel very good about it. My arms were a bit sore for a day or two, but just knowing that baby is safe, especially coming into winter here in Australia, um, it just makes me feel very prepared and very safe. Matt and Sam are both having their flu shots, I believe, on the weekend or next week. There are limited supplies at the moment for Matt. Sam can get his straight away, but we're just I just figured it would be easier if Matt and Sam went to the doctors together since there's 
a lot of issues with going to the doctors at the moment. So I'm just waiting until the flu vaccination comes into stock for the doctor's clinic. And then both boys will go and have their flu shots and that will also get a booster of whooping cough as well. So that is pretty much it in terms of a medical updates. Um, everything is going pretty well at this point. My next appointment with my specialist is in five weeks, I believe, four weeks. I think I'm seeing her every four weeks. Um, so yeah. In terms of how I've been feeling in the last couple of weeks, things have changed so much. So the pregnancy morning all day sickness has pretty much gone away for the most part. I still get a little bit nauseous occasionally in the morning and occasionally at night. Um, it's typically when I haven't eaten in a while. So throughout the day, if I haven't eaten for quite a while, I'll start feeling really nauseous. And as long as I sit down and have something to eat and take a breath for a little while, I'm generally okay. So I'm really, that's probably the thing I'm most excited about. And I feel like I'm starting to really enjoy this pregnancy a lot more now because of that. I'm also enjoying this pregnancy a stack more now because from about... 19, 18, 19 weeks, we started feeling, or I started feeling baby moving in my belly um, and the kicks and everything. Like I said at the start of the video, uh, baby was jumping up and down on my cervix and even in one of the ultrasounds, baby was jumping up and down on my cervix and you could see it. So it was fun for Matt to be able to see it and kind of understand how I was feeling because every time that baby jumps up on your cervix, it makes you want to go to the bathroom. So uh, that was really interesting. Probably the worst symptom that I've had so far is definitely the pregnancy insomnia. So for the last few weeks, pretty much since my last update, I'm not even sure if I mentioned this in my last update, but I had been waking up between two and three in the morning and not being able to get back to sleep until about five or six, which doesn't really help me out because that is when Matt's alarm goes off to get up for work. And then because Matt's getting up, Sam's getting up and that's when my day starts. So uh, for the past few weeks, I've been up from about 3 a.m. in the morning, which has not been fun. However, we did just get a new bed this past weekend, and since then, I have been sleeping so much better. Um, I feel like my back is so much more supported, and I don't know what it is. I just, I'm sleeping much better. I'm still waking up at about 2 o'clock in the morning and um, maybe needing to go to the toilet or just rolling over, but I'm able to get back to sleep, which is really good. So... I'm still quite tired by about two o'clock in the afternoon. I need to lay down and have a bit of a nap, but I'm definitely feeling a lot better and less tired this past few days than what I have been in the last few weeks. And the same goes for my back pain. I've been getting a lot of back pain for the past few weeks and I don't know if it's because I'm typically a belly sleeper um, or a back sleeper and when you're pregnant, you actually can't sleep on your belly or your back, you have to sleep on your sides. So that's another thing that's improved. My back pain is definitely a lot better. I don't know if it's because the round ligament pain has eased or if it's the new bed, um, but either way, the back pain has definitely got a lot better. In terms of breast tenderness, um, that comes and goes, you guys. Sometimes it can be so painful and my nipples will literally be purple. Um, other times they feel fine. So I think that's just a pregnancy thing just comes and goes, but overall I'm feeling really, really good and really excited and really happy. In terms of cravings, this has gotten a little bit weird because I can't pinpoint if it's going to be a boy or a girl based on my cravings. So I have been eating a lot of cheese and crackers lately. A lot of cheese and crackers, a lot of sour worms, and I've been craving a lot of salads and citrus things and also chocolate, pretty much everything. The last thing that I wanted to share with you today is my plans for the rest of this pregnancy and labor and delivery and maternity leave. Um, obviously, with everything going on in the world, a lot has changed. I have absolutely no idea what's going to happen in the next couple of months. Here in South Australia, we have been classed as probably the safest place to be in the world, which is Fantastic. I'm so, so happy. Sam is back at kindergarten um, and childcare. I'm back at work for the time being. But in terms of maternity leave, I am still very confused. So I have spoken to my bosses about it and the plan was to finish up work at around 30 weeks just so that with winter coming, if there was any viruses in the house from me and Sam from work, um, especially Sam with childcare and kindergarten, more so childcare than kindergarten because at least at kindergarten the kids are older, they wash their hands, they don't touch their face. But um, just all the germs in general, 
if this baby was to come early, it would be better for us to have been at home for a couple of weeks, got rid of any viruses so the baby can come home into a healthy, clean, germ-free <laughs> environment. Um, but with everything going so well in the state, I'm not so sure about that now. I honestly have no idea what to do. I'm fairly confused about that. And yeah, we're just kind of playing it by ear at this point. Um, in terms of labor and delivery, obviously, if you've been following what's going on in the world, a lot has changed with birth plans and things like that. Um, Sam can no longer come to the hospital to meet baby after it's born, which it's okay, it's a bit sad, but it's also okay. Hospitals are a pretty daunting place for a kid and I think that he will get so much more out of it meeting the baby here at home in its own little nursery. And um, yeah, just I, I don't really have an update. For a while there, they did stop gas and water births. I believe water births are back on now. So um, I, I, I literally don't have a birth plan anymore. I, I have no idea what I want to do. I know that if I can avoid a cesarean, I 100% want to. Um, obviously getting this baby out the healthiest, safest way possible for both of us is my number one priority. But apart from an epidural this time, um, I have no plans. I think given the last couple of births that we've had, um, I, I just want to get to the hospital in time. I think that's my plan. Get to the hospital in time to have the baby. Um, yeah, I don't know. I would love to hear what you guys have planned or what's changed in your guys' birth plan given the current situation. I also had planned to have everything completely ready, my hospital bags packed and things by week 24. However, that is in about four or five days time and I'm sitting in a somewhat empty nursery. So we are planning on putting the cot in here over the weekend and doing a few bits and pieces, but there are some things that are still coming in the post that have been ordered. And obviously with me not working, um, we've had to really budget how to get things and stagger things coming in. So hopefully I'll have my pregnancy hospital bag um, done in the next couple of weeks and the baby's bag done as well. But yeah, we just have to wait and see on that front. But ultimately that is pretty much it. That is the update. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, things are definitely going so much better. I am gonna finish off this video with a bit of a belly shot for you because it has been a long time since I've done one of those. And yeah, I'll see you guys in an update, maybe in a couple of weeks. I'm not sure if anything's gonna really change too much in the next couple of weeks, but I'll try really hard to get back to you guys with a bit of an update. Otherwise, there'll be updates throughout the vlogs. So if you watch those, I'll be updating you um, sporadically throughout the vlogs as well. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already so you can keep up to date with this pregnancy and the birth and see if the doctor was right with the gender. Um, but otherwise we'll see you in our next video. Thanks for watching. Bye guys. Okay guys, so this is my belly at 23 weeks. You guys are getting a special sneak peek of the nursery at the moment too, which is very exciting, but it's definitely getting a lot rounder up here. Um, and I can feel baby a lot higher now. So it is getting real. I can't believe that we had 23 weeks pregnant. Standing underneath the lights Look into each other's eyes Tired snow